Hi guys, and welcome to our podcast, Word to the Wise. This is our first ever episode in time for Global Youth Day 2021. On today's panel, we have Alina. Hi. Nasha. Hi. Oksana. Hey. And of course, myself, Kyron. The podcast is based on scripture from Proverbs 1 verse 7. Alina, if you'd just like to read that out for me. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of the true knowledge but fools despite wisdom and discipline. Thank you very much. The title of today's podcast is The Rent Is Due. Oksana, if you'd just like to explain that a little bit more for me. I think Muhammad Ali said it best when he said, service to others is a rent you pay for your room here on earth. Mm. Okay, to begin our podcast, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today and thank you for bringing us all together to discuss different ways to impact our communities. Please, may you help everyone watching or listening to learn something from this and help us to move forward as a church and community. Amen. 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 So what communities do you guys think you belong to? What communities do you think we belong to? Okay. I think there's a lot of different ways to answer that question. Yeah. Whether you think in terms of like racial identity or just the communities that we live in, the the different um abilities and skills that you might share with other people that that's also community. So like if you have an interest in, I don't know, dancing or calligraphy, those are communities you belong to. Obviously you belong to specific communities based on what countries you're from or locations. So that's one way to think of it. Definitely. Definitely. I think um for me personally, there's a lot of identities that I think a lot of communities that I think I'm a part of. Mm. What I would definitely say is at the forefront is me being an African Caribbean woman mm-hmm. is a big thing. And also being an Adventist woman as well. Mm. With a experience of being born and growing growing up in a church as opposed to not being born in the in the church exactly. are two different things so i think that's personally a space that i that i occupy when it mm-hmm. comes to identity and community yeah what do you think first corinthians 9 verse 22 has to do with reaching out to different cultures colors and communities i'll wait for you guys to reach the verse and give me the answer okay so first Corinthians nine verse two. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Thank you. Should we read? Yeah. Yeah, someone would just like to read that out for us. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to the Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can do to save some. Wow, that's powerful. Mm. It is. I think is that's is our mission. Because same as God had empathy and want to save everyone mm-hmm. despite of mm. which community you are. Yeah. Definitely. I think just in terms of it relates to that we as people are very multifaceted. So mm. We like to put ourselves in a lot of different boxes. So already, even you're thinking on like a base level, if you're filling in a form and the form says, oh, where are you from? Black, black British, black African, black other. But Jesus wants to reach everybody he possibly can. And that's on many different levels. That's based on religions, creed, color, um, age, hobbies. Anything that you can reach somebody on is a level that we should be able to access and go to because somebody will have that in common with somebody else do you think this verse shows us our capability of being all things because i think sometimes as a church we feel or even as individuals we feel like we can only relate to those that look like us Mm. that talk like us that sound like us that share our interests but here paul is saying i've become all things to all men so there's Mm. a potential for us to not infiltrate but identify with different communities as much mm. as possible yeah i think for me personally when i read that verse it one word came into my mind and that was empathy mm. 
Mm. And I think empathy is different to sympathy in the sense that when you empathize, mm. when you sympathize with someone, right, it's like, okay, I can understand what you're going through, but I can't feel it, yeah. right? But empathy is like, I can feel it's more I'm deep. in your, sh- mm. it's more deep, right? And then people know you're genuine. Exactly. And I think being sincere and genuine is one thing that someone is supposed to get from you when you're trying to relate to them. It's like you walk in my shoes. Yeah. Definitely. You feel my pain. Mm. Yeah. That's it. And sympathy, I think, is more superficial level. I mm. do understand, but I don't connect with your emotion. Mm. Yeah. Connect. And here, the text what is saying to us, actually, you have to feel my pain. Mm-hmm. And you have yeah. to be real, not just because you wait an outcome for me. Or exactly. You wait anything. Exactly. Mm. Do we feel, as a church, specifically as Wilson Church, because we can only speak as our local yeah. unit, are we an integral part of our community in Brent? Mm. Do people know who we are? Mm. Do people know what we stand for? The way you can say, oh, there's um, Woolston Green Library, or there's the fire station, mm. or there's like Dollis Hill Station. Are, you, are people in our community able to say, there's the Adventist church. Oh. I know who they are. I know what they do. And we say it and automatically people understand the purpose of that establishment. Yeah. Okay. Not quite sure that we had. I think we are like an invisible church. Ooh. We are the church down the road, but we don't know anything about. Mm. Mm. I think maybe our profile would have heightened a little bit now, because we've got the center of help and hope, which is a really far-reaching mm. entity in our church that is not just for the needy in our church as well. It's for the entire community, mm. exactly. and I think by starting that initiative a few years ago we've really upped the profile of the Adventist church. So at least people know, even if they don't believe what we believe, they know this is the place where you can get help. Exactly. So I think yeah. that's really helpful. Well, it's a bit more visible in the yeah, community. Yeah, it's more visible. Okay. Looking at Brent as a community, um, they recently released their statistics document that I think they release every five years, like the census kind of thing. Okay. Um, and they've said that the population of Brent is young with 35.1 percent aged between 20 and 39 oh do we think we reach a lot of the young people in brent do we even reach our young people in church Mm. before Mm. we look outside to brent so i'm going to ask a three-layered question do we reach our young people in church do we reach our young people in wilsden and do we reach our young people in brent Mm. okay where do you think we should approach that one from first? It's a question from the first point. You are the speakers. Yeah. I am not the oh. speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the question asker. Right. Oh. What do you guys think? Um, reaching young people in walls, then I think yes and no. I think over time okay. we've tried to like make more programs yeah. and more everything to cater to the young people. And I think it has worked mm. partially. Okay. Not fully, because I think there's still more that we can do. But uh, I think over time we've changed from noticing when I was younger to now there are more people now my age that are still there compared to um, older years. So I think, yeah, but we're not fully effective. Okay, yeah. yeah. Anyone else have any points to make on that when I said? I think we should be more intentional. In terms of how we can reach our young people. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't create a good, healthy space, you cannot be visible and others to see the through you and to see Jesus through you. Exactly. And how we can reach the community, Wells and Brent, mm. if your own house is not staying together, mm. if you're not having a firm ground. That's true. What <laughs> I, I think we have to work in the foundation Indeed. and yeah. once you've, you you have the foundation solid and then you can build up yes. uh, just like yeah. I'm going to throw a curveball for you okay um, you know in Revelation it talks about um, the bridegroom was supposed to have a dinner and he mm. invited people and they didn't come so he went out into the highways and the byways and he invited everybody and let them come in and mm. take their place 
Now, that's not saying to give up on our youth, mm. but do you feel we have to find a balance between trying to maintain our young people in church and also realising that there are people out there who haven't heard about Jesus yet? True. Is that a good point? Um, in the same time, I do believe that we have to do the work in us first because we have to become that healthy well, I'm not saying that we're not, yeah? But we have to be that healthy space when we, it's, everything is safe to share, when you I can literally have a proper relationship with each other, a part of the surface when it is, how was your day, how was your week, and that's mm -hmm. it. I think yeah. we have to go more deep, because yeah. same as in the text here, mm -hmm. is actually you have to have empathize with each other. Mm -hmm. And if I thought um, that you passed, you was next to me every Sabbath and you was in a deep situation in, in your life. And I wasn't even aware because our the relationship was happy so Sabbath. How are you? How's your, uh, how's your week? And you know how easy it is to put masks and say, everything is fine. Yeah. Easily. And we find that we have so much struggle in, in our lives and we are not able to share with the people, but you have, we have that relationship with each other. I will be able to share without this going on with you and I will not be ashamed. Mm. That's why I'm saying when it's healthy environment, yeah. when it's actually mm -hmm. you care. And if I'm sharing something to you, I know that you, at least you can hear me. You will be present in the discussion and you have empathized for me. And then you can give me solution or your vision because when you're in the bubble, you don't see the way out of the bubble. True. That's why when I think we should, is our at least my goal in in the community and in my church community yeah. to achieve so in a sense there's no point going and reaching people if you don't have a safe space to bring them to yeah yeah, yeah. and i think That's sometimes it. at uh, church uh, we're always like evangelize evangelize mm. evangelize but then we want not retain because we're actually very toxic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely yeah definitely i think a couple of points that I was thinking of with that is firstly along that same point of if we bring people in, what are we bringing them into? Mm. Right. So there's no point in going out and saying, for example, I used to go to Holloway church and every time, every other week, new people would be coming in, new young people. Mm -hmm. And one thing that they were really good at their, at their pathfinder club, for example, was a really, really active, department yeah. constantly they're seeing their junk call everything out on road and young people will be like oh i want to be a part of that yeah right so it's making sure that if we are bringing people in then we've got something safe sorry safe healthy and yeah. interesting to retain them as you mm. said and also another point in terms of how to reach the young people in our church mm. and retain them yeah. i think I was thinking about this as well and observing a few things. And uh, one thing I realized is we don't observe our youth at all. Mm -hmm. So we don't look at them and spot talent and gifts in them and then utilize it. So for example, um, global youth days are given, mm. right? That's when we can get the young people to preach and to pray and to organize and do yeah. everything that we're good at. But then for the rest of the year, you got all your Sabbath plan with all your sermons and not one single one is below 35 40 crickets right mm. so young people when you'll see them at church it'll be scripture reading offertory may splash in a little bit of welcome for good measure Oops. but a, a welcome that your mom wrote for a you. welcome that your mom wrote for you right <laughs> and so i think we've got to really if we got to sort of put our actions where our mouth is yeah. and operate with our feet and mm -hmm. say if you really care about your young people how are you investing in them are you nurturing them so because our young people now are gonna be the leaders of this church and it's not enough to say we're gonna have a young people in x person in x department use them as a token yeah spot the young people and it comes down to the relationships that Alina was talking about. Because mm -hmm. only when you build the relationship, that's when you realize, you know what? Nash is quite good at this, you know? Yeah. Alina's great at this. Karen, that's that's his field. And then you're mm. able to use that for the benefit of the church. Okay. But speaking about that, I think 
it boils down to valuing what you have or valuing people. But then to then turn our gaze outward, do we value the young people in Wilsden enough or the young people in Brent enough to actively go out and seek them? Because often what we do is we put on programs for us or we put on programs so people come outside in. Mm -hmm. But if we look at Jesus' example as the great shepherd, he left the 99 and went out mm, looking for the one for the because one. you saw the value of the one. Do we truly, when we think about it, actually care about the people that we're supposed to be reaching? Because if we actually did, I think we'd be doing a lot more than what we're doing. We say we care, and then we hand out pieces of paper through their post box and say, yeah, that's it. I've done my bit. What are we actually doing? And I think it was great that Oksana pointed out the work that CHH is doing. 100%. The community mm -hmm. of um, mm. health and hope. Yeah. Yeah what they are doing they're showing actively that i love you and that's why i don't want you to go hungry that's why i don't want you to be struggling with clothing that's why i want to do these things for you exactly so it's a question for us as young people and i'm going to pose it to you guys as the youth department okay do you actually care about the young people mm. in Wilsden and in brent yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it just depends on on your perspective and what and like just how you value young people in general because a lot of people don't think that they can learn something from a young person mm. or they don't think that they have like good ideas because they're a bit you know riffraff and that so i think <laughs> i think that like if if you stop looking at like the external and you go with an open mindset you'll actually learn something because there's a young person out there that has a blessing for you that you don't even know indeed but i think yeah. you just don't give them the opportunity to mm. to um display that indeed but i think same way um that alina was talking about relationship it kind of the net only reaches as far as you can throw it mm. so if your reach is the people that you know of course you'll be like oh my gosh i love the young people <laughs> i love myself i love anita i love nasha indeed yeah. i love everybody i love i love bradley prince man bradley prince is so cool Shout out to Bradley Prince. <laughs> <laughs> but then, if I'm thinking about, oh wait, what's who's that guy? He comes like every like once a month. Oh, I don't, I don't like the look of him. What's what's his name? Oh, he doesn't have mm. a name. Then how am I going to reach him if I have no relationship? Exactly. So sometimes the net is it's nice to say, oh, we care about the young people, but sometimes it's going like the little bit of extra mile to push a little bit harder to say, I want to get to know this person on a level that's not just, hey, how you doing? Happy Sabbath. How's the week? Oh. God is good. I can't complain. And then you keep it moving. I mean, he is, but I feel, I feel attacked. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's my line. That's my line. That's my line. That's my line. Shoe fits. Yeah. Wear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Alina. But in the same time, I think it's double way. You see, okay. Mm. Because also we have a place in this, in the scene. Yeah, mm. we have to reach as well the older same as the younger yes, of course mm. and we have to preach with example because if you something you know when you went through something and no one did for you yeah and you went to do deep stuff mm. you have to do same thing that other didn't do for you That's for true, others of course and we have to for me i see with the way i'm like in a halfway we have to reach both yeah, sides. Yes. Same as we have to educate the older folks. Say, guys, we are visible, we are here, and we care for you because we can learn so many things from them. That's true. Same as we can, uh, I can learn from the someone much younger than me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to educate yourself to have good emotional intelligence. It's something in church we don't speak about empathy and emotional yeah. intelligence. Mm -hmm. We speak so much about studies, we exactly. speak about prophecy, and speak about we, we're so good in study, but in such practical things in emotional intelligence, it's helping you how to deal with your own emotions, yeah, and it's helping you how to reach others by feeling what they feel. That's true, mm -hmm. that's and true. I think we have to make more intentional actions say whoa how we, how we can do how we can reach how we can make more visible that we need each other yeah and it's something is i firmly believe that in the bible said that we are the body of christ yeah and in the body of christ you can be the head i can be the toes Ooh. 
And by the and without toast, tell me how you will walk. That's yeah. it. Thank That's you. It. Thank you. Good a try. word. That's or even, word. If, even if it's just the toes, you say, oh, that is significant. I want to be hand because you mm. hold. Yes. You have power. You are rich in things. You hold. But tell me how you will walk if you don't have toes. That's it. Mm. And That's we, it. each one of us is important. Because you, you spoke at the beginning, Anita, that we have to reach different communities that we are part of. And God created us with different abilities and different skills yeah. for that for that particular point. Exactly. Because perhaps you can reach um, African um, people, you can relate to them, to the story, what they have to yeah. go through. Yeah. I can relate, I don't know, to we're Romanian because I'm Romanian. Yeah. You will have different skills, or I can. You are very good. I don't know at acting. You can help someone that is going through a test. Any skills that you have, or any things that emotional that you put God in you, God equip you for a reason yeah. and make you you for a purpose. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna move on from that topic because I feel like we could be here for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Points are being made. So we've talked about communities. Now moving on to culture, and I'm going to throw out another fact. So this is all based on the summary report from 2014. And it says that uh, Brent is ethnically diverse with 65% of its population from black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds. Mm. So we know that the area that we reach looks different. Mm. It's very mixed. What do we do as a church, as Wilson Church in Brent, what can we do or what are we already doing to reach people from other cultures yeah okay so i think first to dwell into that we should really discuss what culture is yeah so i do have the definition pulled up obviously so the one that i thought was interesting was one that says the ideas customs and social behavior of a particular people or society and the example it gives here is afro-caribbean culture so obviously a lot of wilson church members are from either africa or the caribbean so that's already the culture of a lot of us so i think even if we might not be able to relate to specific things in like how our countries are back home or how the people relate but here we have that similar experience you know like a walk down the street say oh are you from so and so are you from this place oh no but oh my best friend's from zim oh i have a good friend and she's from san lucia yeah no like i, I can see that yeah so we have those things in common so i do think culture is important and it is one thing to be i think maybe we have like a little bit of a trouble because we're stuck in seeing people from the same things that we relate to so easily so if i'm not presented with anybody different or like a different culture or a different experience from me then i'm not going to get that different point of experience from them they're going to have similar experience to me they might not have the exact same but it will be more take like oh has that happened to you yeah yeah no like that happened to me oh did you have yeah of course to have similar yes. experiences because we're from similar backgrounds do you feel that that sometimes can create then within the church a confirmation bias where because we share this common culture mm -hmm. we all feel that things should be a certain way because it fits in with our culture and we make sure that things continue operating to further that culture so for example i know and this is a this might be a bit of a controversial speak it topic, sis. speak it I'm, sis. A, I'm gonna speak it anyway because i'm not on camera <laughs> <laughs> but i am um, the voice and the voice you don't even know who i am incognito Ooh, is there? but um i know a lot of people have issues with cultural churches Ooh. because why aren't you speaking English? Mm. Why are you not doing this and that? Because in our culture, usually as Afro-Caribbeans, um, as Africans, as Caribbeans, we've been colonized, so we've learned to speak English. Yeah. So that's the way yes. we think worship should happen. If I then go to London, Ghana, and they do a sermon in Chui, I feel excluded because <laughs> I speak English, and this church is in England, so why are you not speaking English? You English laughing, yes. but I've seen a lot it's of It's true. Yeah. It's definitely this. true. I've seen a lot of yeah. say this, and if we say that we're a church in Brent that's multi-ethnic, mm. that multicultural, are. how are we appealing to the Tamil speakers 
to people from Romania, mm. to people from Sri Lanka that have a different culture to That's the British true. culture. They perceive yeah. Jesus a different way to us who've come from Africa or the Caribbean. That's How true. are we reaching them? Or do they have to fit our cookie cutter version Ooh. of Christianity and Adventism for us to accept them? Yeah. I think that is such a powerful thing because I was studying Mark chap- chapter 7 and Mark chapter 7 is talking about when the Pharisees were sort of telling off Jesus and the disciples for not following some of the traditional norms of like washing their hands and keeping themselves clean and this and that because in their mind that's what the religion is right and that's what you're supposed to do that's a cultural thing but you're supposed to do it mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of ethnocentricity going on which is the concept of you've got to fit into my culture in order for you to be acceptable. Mm. So we see a lot of ethnocentrism when the missionaries went all around the globe in the 19th century, 20th century, and they told the Africans, they told the Indians, they told whoever else, this is the only way that you can accept Christianity. You've got to change your cells. Mm. You've got to civilize you. I remember listening to a lecture on YouTube and the, it's not quite a lecture, it was a debate. Okay. And they had a question and they had like a proposition and it says everything. We must not be afraid to assert the superiority of Western civilization. And I was like, raw. <laughs> raw (laughs) it's it's problematic it's problem it's problematic Mm. it's problematic because i think as mish as missionaries because we're all missionaries every single one of us we've got to avoid that sort of idea that we are superior to you Mm. blah 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 and jesus spoke about that because then he said well these keeping of traditions and norms and so on can be a distraction a big distract distraction and that's what he told the pharisees that it's not what goes into a man that defiles him but what comes out right so i think we sometimes use this whole idea of keeping up traditions my culture is superior to your culture sort of thing in order to suppress the holy spirit and to nullify the commandments of God, because you've got to see the commandments in the way that I view Ooh. the commandments and you've got to implement it the way that I want you to implement it. Okay. So if I'm telling you that you've got to wash your hands before you do everything, that's what you're going to do. So one suggestion that I have is being more open, being more like, what's the word? Polyglot. When you speak more than one language. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That dictionary coming true come on yeah i think we've got to be more i think we've got bsl for a lot of for some of our sermons we do have that um that will be brilliant if we can expand on that if you yeah. have the capability mm-hmm. and also do programs with like the muslim community with the jewish community whatever mm. else and say okay do we have interpreters let's have let's have a, a sermon in urdu and then we'll have the interpretation, the yeah. interpretation in English, because we have a Pakistani mission mission going on, mm-hmm. and they have to put up with pastors speaking in English, That's true. and then having an interpreter speaking Urdu or Pashto or whatever mm-hmm. language they're speaking. I think it'll do us good because I think we've gotten complacent mm. in our culture, yeah. and it's stopping us in many ways from really doing the Lord's work. I think one thing I want to throw out there is it's interesting that before you had to travel across the sea to meet people that didn't speak english or weren't from your culture but now they're here and what you often find is that they as immigrants we build community hubs and we stay in those community hubs and don't really come out of it so it's always i think what oksana said is powerful because if you set the example rather than waiting for them to come to you we have a huge tamil community in wilsdon have we ever thought one day we'd have a Tamil service right. and hand out flyers and invite people to hear the gospel in Tamil? Mm. But, um, yes. you know, we'll hand out flyers for programs that we're going to have in English that a lot of people don't understand. They can't even read the flyer. Right. Because, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 That's true. I think, like, you know, even the Bible, um, in the book of Esther, it says that God there were what, 127 provinces right and they sent out like 
to say that Esther was there. They sent her out in every single language that was there. Mm. 127, they sent her out from India to Ethiopia. Right. They, they sent her out. I think um, we can do the same. Mm. Like, if you, if, like, Alina's Romanian, right? Yeah. Thank God that Alina's there the day a Romanian person comes to church. Mm. Right. Mm. Otherwise, mm. speak it. Mm. We'll be speak it. Mm. Speak it. Because I, I, you know, I just think that we can, we can do a little bit more. We can do better. Yeah, I don't think do everything at one time. That's, of course. That's a course. bit mm. rash, but you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, like a little, a little, a little something, something, yeah. a little something, something. There, you know, mm. try little foods, you know, yeah. special days. Mm. Not every day, the food we have. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you don't want to say too much. Though. But I think if you're working in you, and you practice that empathy and care Correct. everything will come natural yeah. it would not be like a tick box oh i help a romanian community yeah or i have the pakistani community mm, it's true. like a reward for you right but one for you for you becomes a way of living yeah and in the same way as now you now we, now we try to exercise yeah every sunday uh, we, we, try. We, we try we try we try we, we, we got this so far we are consistent <laughs> that, that's the thing you it's a work process until yeah. everything becomes natural same as we learn to walk you just have to we learn to walk like that no, isn't it mm -hmm. we have to go little by little wow. but we have to work in that empathy process and mm -hmm. until we say like i'm not have to do this yeah. i do this because it's coming from from my heart mm, exactly. mm. well about to move on to the next topic but i just wanted to close this area with saying when the holy spirit fell at pentecost it enabled the disciples to speak and every man heard it in his language yeah. so we honestly have no excuse to not be reaching out to people of different cultures or people of different languages yeah. because mm. the holy spirit set us the example the first thing he did when he came to earth was make sure that everybody was able to hear the message mm -hmm. in the language that they understood. And that goes beyond just your physical language that you speak, your language as, you know, a black British person, your language as an immigrant, your language as a woman, you are able to hear those communities yeah. were able to be reached with the gospel in a language that they understood. Exactly. There's no excuse. All right, we're going to move on to our final topic. And I've pushed it to last because it can be an area of contention. Okay. I like it's the... <laughs> is the topic of color Ooh. in the church okay. and one thing that i found and i'm going to throw this out there is that i think london is very reflective and the london churches so area six and the ones in the greater areas okay. are very reflective of how london is to the uk in general when you're in london it's so multicultural that you assume the whole uk is like oh, that right and then you leave and, and you realize <laughs> that, oh, okay, I'm the only one. Mm. And that can then express itself either in good ways yeah. or negative yes. ways. So as a church, is that a bad thing that we have black and white churches? Or is it natural that we just coalesce to those that look like us? And should it be good? As Alina says, you have to work at things and make them a habit. Yeah. So do we have to get in the habit of making sure that our churches reflect what the body of Christ looks as a general, different people? I'm going to throw that out to you guys. That is a little bit of a Ooh. sticky one still. Sticky one. Gonna have to ponder it for a little minute. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I would say, give. let's take Wilson. Okay. Mm. Wilson is a predominantly black church. Yeah, True. and we have had white people come. We've had Indians come. We've yeah. had so forth. But there's a predominant presence yeah. of mm -hmm. one race mm. in the church. True. Do you think that's fine, and we should just leave it that way, or do we think we should make more of an effort when we're evangelizing to make our church look different? Mm. Um, I don't see a problem with it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm quite happy. Well, I think um, with Wallstead. If you look at it, everybody that goes to Houston relatively live in the area or their family goes there. So it's not necessarily like all of us black people decide that's where we're going to go. But, you know, like out of convenience and everything, that is our our spot. And I think that we do 
we do embrace visitors of other colours when they come, you know. Yeah. You know, stand up for welcome and <laughs> and that. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody. I think we we do try a lot. Um maybe we can do more, but there's yeah. you can always do more you and can everything. Always do That's more. True. So um I don't think that we intentionally do it, but mm. you know, trials the one time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're happy there. And you bring your family and they're there too and then it's just it just will come to your home and you're not thinking that you're pushing anyone away. It's just mm. what you know best. That's true. It's true. Okay. Yeah. I can say something. Um you know, I'm not from Wales then. I wasn't born in Wales then. I don't have the family in Wales then. Okay, yeah. But you know what kept me in Wales then? The people who care. Oh right. A word. Right. And I had two pe- particular people, which was your dad. Brother Josh Kabambi. Brother Josh Kabambi. <laughs> Shut up, Brother Josh <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and that happened five years ago mm. when I couldn't mm. even speak proper English. Okay. I was just mm. in, in struggling because I came here to learn. Yeah. Right. And he welcomed me and embraced me, although mm. I wasn't even able to communicate very well. Yeah. And same as Earl, uh, mm. Samuel. Mm. Which is Uncle Earl. <laughs> and, and to Maria. Yes. And that was really helpful for me because although i was struggling they have patience and they walk with me mm. and they was looking after me every sabbath how yeah. are you yeah. how is yeah. your week and it was intentional mm. yeah That's because right. i came just to visit a wilson mm. and i googled it, the, the closest church next to me was oh, okay. wilson i said okay let me try this one okay mm. and five years i'm still here okay mm. Because that is the how important is the relationship and yeah. how we in, that is the impact that we do in others' life. That's it. Yeah. Mm. But perhaps others they don't know what yeah. impact we have in mm. them. Mm. But definitely in these two people and and Maria three. Wow. Yeah. Um, Look how good. That's what you yeah. found. I'm so happy to hear that you had that positive experience because exactly. it's quite yeah. daunting going into that's a place the special that you don't thing know. about us and them. Like they 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 know because we will. Well, we've all been there for ages, me since birth. Mm. You notice new people when they come, and then yeah. when they come, like you do your best. When it's lunchtime, everyone's pulling yeah. you to their table. You go to the front it gets of the a queue. bit too much, yes. but oh, I miss you, that. You feel it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's such a long time. It's like yeah. I miss, I miss people. I miss church. I miss yeah. yeah all really this wild. lockdown yeah. is not good, man. But I think um one way as well when you're talking about color is that. I think one thing that a lot of people of many different colors can relate to is food and uh, right. feeding is not just an experience where you know you're just giving somebody food. That's almost like a love it's language. Biblical, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It's biblical. It is. Yeah. When you see oh, Jesus, where he was was mm. eating with everyone. All he the was time. All, the time. all the time. All the time. I love all to eat time. and fellowship, <laughs> fellowshipping and eating with the people that you love, even people you don't know. But when you eat something, eat. you're like, wait. Wait, no, are you are you guys tasting the same thing I'm tasting? Yeah, and mm. you can bond like I can go how many years I can talk to Ani about oh, do you remember when we went to that restaurant that time? And <laughs> one flavor is on my mind. I'm like, do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, and small exactly. things like that because we I think sometimes we we get quite trapped in like oh we need to do it in a specific way, but there's mm. a lot of different ways to meet there is. a lot of different people where they are. Yeah. I'm not saying obviously you have to give everybody food like oh yeah we have to give everybody, <laughs> but that is definitely a thing that humans do we eat yes yeah. mm. and if we can share that or share the joy of eating fellowship and breaking bread of people mm-hmm. that we care about then we can reach a lot of Any, different anybody, people anybody. a lot of anybody. different people i think that the one thing that i would say in um with the adventist church it has its own issues as every church does let's not pretend that it doesn't have issues with race but mm. i must say i was very very proud mm to see people like pastor kirk thomas Come on. pastor um anthony fuller yeah. out at the black lives matter march mm, yeah yes. that people care about your well-being exactly a lot of adventist pastors a lot of adventist people step up for against racial right. injustice mm. and i think that we're not perfect but we try to show the love of jesus and not engage in behavior that would make people feel uncomfortable and i think one thing that I liked about Alina's story is mm-hmm. also sometimes as human beings we come with prejudices of our own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So True. when we go somewhere, we want everybody to look like us because we don't know how to fit in. When I went to Plymouth Church, I was like, okay, <laughs> um, 
Where are all my dark skinned people? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Do you know what? People aren't their skin. That's it. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a whole soul underneath them. And mm. this is what Paul was saying in the verse that I've become all things to all men. All men. That's it. Mm. We're all the same. Mm. When you remove the culture, when you remove the community, when you remove the color, we're all human beings. Right. Mm. Jesus and in need of love from one another. Easily. So um, I must say that I am quite proud as an Adventist that we tend not to be the most problematic. We can be. We can be. <laughs> but we're not the most <laughs> problematic. Let's say it's right. work in process. It's, it's a, a work, work in process, process, but I think we're on the right we're track. We're on the right through, track. Through God, we are a work in progress. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Um, so I'm just going to let each of you say one thing. Um, that you would want the listener to take away from this session about reaching their color, community, culture. How do we love on people? Okay. Mm. One thing from each person and we'll close. Right. Um, I think we should start with Alina. Okay. Oh, that's a question. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> um, I think just um, educate ourselves, mm-hmm. which is important. Uh, have that time with myself and to see how I can do better, how I can, if I don't have empathy, mm. at least work on that. Yeah. Because then will be no issues with race, with nationality, True. with your status, if you're male or female, mm-hmm. because then I want to reach you and I want to become that person to help you and to hold your hand when, when you're going through struggle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it has to be, because I don't think it's just our mission. Yeah. It's that how we can mission. reach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. And when, same as Jesus care for me, I have to care for each one of you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I will be selfish and that's not the point. Very. That's it. Uh, I think I would say, um, give everybody a chance. Like don't just um, shut someone off based on face value. Um, I think you should let everybody be able to express themselves because you never know what you may learn from someone that's the complete opposite to you. Mm. I think um, one thing I want people to take away from this is come out of your comfort zone a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Mm. When you're stuck in like your own echo chamber, right? That's true. You really really miss out on a lot of value in other people Mm. and much like what nasha was saying you never know what you can learn from someone and one thing i found having a lot of debates and a lot of arguments and a lot of discussion with people i can come from the polar opposite side on on any scale moral scale Mm. um political scale whatever but then after continuous discussion you will always find yourself finding some form of common ground with the other person. And especially when it's face-to-face, I know it's a bit difficult now with lockdown, but when you speak to someone emotionally and face-to-face, that emotional connection you feel with the person, you really do mm. see that other person as a human being. It's easy when you're, you have a screen in front of you, you're on social media, it's easy to cuss out someone on, on, on Instagram, right? Mm. But when you're with that person face-to-face, you see the human being and there's always a way for you to get to that middle ground with someone so i think escape making an intentional effort to get out of your your bubble your comfort zone your echo chamber and that is what paul to me was trying to say when he said i was all things to all men amen i just want to read a little bit of scripture so john 17 verse 21 says that they all may be one as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me so just to encompass everybody's points i think that it really it's good to understand that we do have our differences but we do also have our similarities and that's something that we do need to come together and bond about because we're all in this for jesus we're all make we all make our part of the body of christ so we need to be more reflective and show that definitely definitely so just to end this off that spicy discussion i really like that guys that was that was really interesting i learned a lot Mm -hmm. um christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people the savior mingled with men 
as one who desired their good, yeah. much like Elena was saying. Okay. He showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs and he won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me, accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of the love of God. This work will not, cannot be without fruit. And that's from the Ministry of Healing, pages 143 and 144. Oh. So I think we just like to pray just to close this as well. Just like to bow your heads with me. All right, dear Jesus, thanks for bringing us all here together to understand that through you we all are one body. Please help us to be more inclusive and to understand that we are in this together with unity um, and to understand and also embrace our differences and to only with you and through the work of the Holy Spirit that we can truly impact the various communities that we are part of and reach out to those in a manner that we might not have thought to reach out into before. Please help us to understand and reflect and use these principles in our daily lives. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 I'd like to thank you for listening to our first ever podcast, Word to the Wise, titled The Rent is Due. Thank you for listening.